and welcome back to the another episode of daily quiz come news analysis for IS 2025 it is 23rd August today as you know every day we discuss this class here in this class we discuss three types of questions you know basically this class is about the daily quiz we take up different types of questions which are relevant for your preparation you know we take up three different types of questions in in this uh, in this video the first type we discuss the questions with respect to the current affairs you know the current affairs which are in the newspaper every day we take up uh, those current affairs we take up the most important articles from the newspaper and we derive questions from them we take you know while deriving those questions we have the mentality of the upsc examiner you know if for example he is reading the newspaper today and he comes through these articles and if he has to frame the paper how he will frame the questions from those articles we have that mentality we have that mindset and drive the, and derive these questions for you you know it will help you in two different ways first it will help you connect these current affairs with your preparation and second it will help you revise your current affairs and the second type of questions which we discuss here are related to the static topic you know as i had promised you every day we are going to discuss some static topic in this initiative in this video itself you know we had started from the polity and the book which we are using for our preparation is lakshmi kant you know we are taking every day some every day some important uh, topic in this discussion and we will discuss that and derive a question from from that topic and you know we discuss that question in a very, very detailed manner so that you will get well prepared and if you are watching this if you had read the book it will help it will definitely help you revise your uh, static portion too and also at the end we discuss few previous year questions so that it will give you the proper idea how the questions do come in the exam and also it can it will help you derive the information from those previous year questions and help you prepare well for your upcoming exam so this is about this initiative now before we start our discussion i would like to request you guys few things you know first of all please have your notebook in front of you and start writing these questions you know it is said that uh, before your examination you should at least practice at you should at least practice 1000 questions before going in, before going to your examination hall so this is the uh, this is the best opportunity for you guys take up your notebook and start writing these questions develop your question book so that it will help you when your exams would be near it will definitely help you revising in revising your current affairs as well as static portion and also develop you a question bank which will give which will boost your confidence while entering in the examination hall and and also i would uh, like to request you guys please do subscribe the channel and share it with your friends so that they may also get benefited you know this is very unique initiative here i may fumble in introducing it but trust me this is very unique initiative here you would hardly find such initiatives anywhere in the youtube or anywhere else you know why it is unique because we had clubbed everything in this single video you know you have to be patient with us you have to follow us every day it will definitely prepare you well before your examination so please do subscribe the channel and watch the full video now let's start our discussion uh, by looking at the topics which we have to discuss today from which we will derive the questions first the important topic which was in the newspaper today was death at work you know industrial accidents we saw 17 people died because of this industrial accident in andhra pradesh we will discuss about it we will put some light on it and we will derive some prelims based questions on it you know this is basically a, a means based topic but you know who knows there are some terms which were in the newspaper itself which will reflect which will definitely reflect your prelims preparation too so we had formed some questions uh, from this article which are relevant for your prelims then the second topic it is about the india's indian space mission you know we had this celebrated on the 23rd august the india's uh, space mission you know uh, every year we we are going to celebrate it it was uh, introduced last year by pm modi so we will discuss about it we will see our achievements in the recent past and we will derive some questions on them then finally there is a, a unique uh, there was a unique article in fact uh, it is very relevant for your preparation and it is very hot topic but there is something different in it because ukraine they had uh, uh, they had 
held a massive attack on Russia, and you know they uh, garbled some of the uh, some of the land of the Russians. So we will discuss about it too. Then finally, we will discuss about the uh, Bangladesh floods and how it is uh, how anti-Indian sentiments are arising from these Bangladeshi floods. We will discuss about it. Then finally, there was a picture of a of a child who was feeding the pigeons, and we will discuss about its health impacts. Now, with this, let's look at the first topic which we have to discuss today. The first article it is about the death at the work industrial accidents. You know. This article is basically related to the disaster management. You know, what is the background of this article? There was an industrial disaster at the pharmaceutical industry in the Andhra Pradesh, in which 17 workers had lost their lives. What was this disaster about? What they were trying to do and what led to this disaster? Let us have a look at it. Let us see. Uh, let us uh, see it in a little bit of detail. You know, before we go into the detail of that, we have to know about the toxic gas which was leaked there in that industry, which is namely as methyl tertiary butyl ether, which is abbreviated as MTB. This is very volatile gas and it is very poisonous gas. You know, one of its properties, it is very volatile and turns into gas very quickly. It vaporizes very quickly. So there was a leak of this gas and, you know, these workers, they tried to fix it. But unfortunately, this gas, it went on the electric board and caused a short circuit there because of this 17 workers lost their lives. Now, this raises a concern in in the management of the industries how you know what are the guidelines these industries should follow whether they are following these gu guidelines or not what are the causes of these accidents which uh, uh, which lead to the death of so many people and this also reminds us of a very disaster disaster which happened in 1984 which is namely as bhopal gas tragedy in which thousands of people thousands of people died and this was also this bhopal gas tragedy it was caused by the leakage of methyl isocyanide and it is the poisonous gas because of that thousands of people died. You know, with respect to this Bhopal gas tragedy, the government was forced to produce an Environment Protection Act. And in this Environment Protection Act, a special principle was laid down, which was polluter pays principle. About these polluter pays principle and uh, this methyl, tertiary butyl, ether, we will discuss it in detail in our questions. You know, the UPSC examiner, while reading this newspaper, while reading this article, he may form a question on uh, on this toxic gas, which is a methyl, uh, tertiary butyl, ether, or he may also, uh, you know, frame a question on Environmental Protection Act. Uh, or the polluter pays principle. You know, there are different ways in which he can form a question. Now, we will go to that article before we will see what can, what are the major reasons for these accidents which often happen in these industries. If we will see largely these accidents are man-made. These uh, accidents are due to the negligence from the management, due to the negligence from the workers. But there could be some natural disasters too which lead to these accidents. For example, earthquakes, for example, floods and tsunamis. These can also lead to these disasters. You know, they damage the building and they they initiate the reactions which can harm the whole society there. Also, in this, there are various man-made, uh, you know, man-made uh, uh, reasons for these accidents. For example, there is some technical failure. There is negligence from the technicians, and this leads to these disasters. There is lack of compliance of SOPs, and also there is poor maintenance. There, these are various ways by which these disasters happen, by which these uh, accidents happen. And also, some other reasons can be uh, sabotage from some. Uh, you know, unhappy worker, he can sabotage the building. And also there could be some terrorist attack by, you know, the mentality of terrorism is different. They may attack some industry and, uh, you know, leak those poisonous gases which can harm the whole society. So these are different ways by which these such accidents happen. So in this article, uh, let's try to recap what we understood. You know, there was a disaster, you know, in a pharmaceutical industry in Andhra Pradesh in which 17 workers lost their lives. The main reason for that was the uh, toxic gas leakage, which is methyl tertiary butyl ether. 
You know about the usage of methyl tertiary butyl ether. We will discuss it in the questions about its uh, properties. We will discuss it in the questions. You know, uh, there had been by this uh, this uh, accident, it reminded us us of the Bhopal gas tragedy in 1984, which led to the uh, production of the Environmental Protection Pro Protection Act, and uh, it laid the, down the principle of polluter praise principle. So this was about. Uh, this was about this article. Now let's have a look at the questions which can be formed from this article. The main uh, purpose of this discussion is to look at the questions itself. You know, I assume that you had already read the newspaper. So if you had not read it, I, this will definitely help you revise to have some idea about the context itself. And, you know, if you are writing these, you know, I take up the most important points from the newspaper which are relevant for you. So I think this would be enough for you for your current affairs preparation. Now let's have a look at the questions which can be framed from this article. Here the question number one, it says, which of the following statements accurately describe the use of methyl tertiary butyl ether? in the pharmaceutical industry you know we have to find out the use of methyl tertiary butyl ether in the pharmaceutical industry how does it help in there the first statement mtbe is commonly used as a solvent in the extraction and purification of pharmaceutical compounds 100 percent correct nothing wrong with it you know we, you don't have to be the chemical uh, engineer here you just have to remember these facts with respect to this these uh, you know these facts can be very much important for your preparation so just remember them you don't have to be the chemical engineer you don't have to know the design chemical design of these these compounds so just uh, remember these facts that would be enough for you. Second statement, MTB is employed as a reagent in the synthesis of uh, certain pharmaceutical drugs. 100% correct, it is uh, employed as a reagent. So nothing wrong with this statement. Third statement, MTB is used as a stabilizer in the formulation of oral medication. This is incorrect. Let us, what is the reason for that? You know, MTB, it is not typically used as a stabilizer, stabilizer in oral medication. It is primary role, role in the pharmaceutical industry are related to its use as a solvent and reagent. So it is primary role, the primary role of methyl tertiary butyl ether is to act as a solvent or a reagent, not as a stabilizer. So in the question number one, the statement one and statement two are correct. Unfortunately, the statement three is incorrect. Now with this, let's move at the question number two. It is also with respect to the methyl tertiary butyl ether. You know, here we have to find out its properties. Now look at the question itself. The question says, which of the following statements regarding the properties of methyl tertiary butyl ether are correct? The first statement, MTB, it is, uh, is a highly soluble organic compound in water, 100% correct. Second statement, MTB is known for its high vapor pressure, making it easy evaporative, 100% correct. That, that is the very core reason for this accident because of its high vol vol volatility because of this high vapor pressure because of it is uh, evaporative nature it uh, evaporates very quickly and it uh, sat on the uh, electric circuit and this led to the short circuit of the uh, industry and this led to this accident so this is 100 percent correct the st second statement is also correct looking at the third statement the methyl tertiary butyl ether is characterized by its strong and Persistent order, which is detectable even at low concentration, 100% correct. So in the question number two, all the three statements are correct. Now, you know, while reading this article, these are not the only topics from which the question can be framed. There were other also important points which were mentioned in this presentation also, which were mentioned in this article also, like the, like the, like the you know, polluter praise principle, now let us look at the next question which can be framed from this article. Here the question says, which of the following statements accurately describe the polluter pays principle as it relates to environmental protection in India? So here we have to find out what does it mean. The first statement, the polluter pays principle mandates the, that the cost of pollution control measures should be borne by the government. This is totally incorrect and absurd statement. So why the government would pay the Pay, why the government would pay the cost borne uh, cost borne by some private industries 
so this does not make any sense the first statement is incorrect second statement under the polluter pays principal industries are required to bear the costs of pollution uh, abatement and rem remediation of environmental damage 100 percent correct third statement the principle is enshrined in various indian environmental laws and has been endorsed by the supreme court of india to 100 percent correct so for the question number three the correct statements are statement two and statement three which from the code given below makes the correct option the option b now with this i hope you had understood the topic itself i hope you were able to connect it with your preliminary preparation now let's look at the another topic which we have to discuss it is about india's space mission you know 23rd august it was declared as a national space day last year because of the achievement india had uh, on this day uh, on this day on this particular day india became the fourth country to land on the moon and first country to land in south pole so this uh, this showed the uh, this shows the achievement of india in the space mission it shows the india's uh, capacity india's capability in you know in the space race which is uh, the norm these days every country is trying to reach in the space you know every country is trying to develop the tourist space tourism every country is trying to go to the moon and you know do different researches and so there is a, it is a more geopolitical uh, topic right now than this than only the research competition so all the countries are uh, trying to uh, you know develop show their uh, soft power by uh, you know show their capabilities by traveling to the moon by traveling in the space and show their scientific achievements in this case india has achieved brilliance on last year we uh, you know we did this we achieved this uh, this landmark when we uh, when we reached uh, on the sound when we landed on the south pole of the moon and that uh, part of this uh, south pole of the moon uh, the landing point is named as the shiva shakti point where the rover was landed and you know uh, in this mission uh, you know india has discovered very important discoveries by the you know the uh, the progrian rover which was uh, landed on the moon on the south uh, on the south pole it has uh, it has found some uh, astonishing discoveries there for example it uh, it found that ancient magma ocean and uh, you know origin uh, indian uh, magma ocean origin theory under moon surface it found out that it showed the pictures of that and you know it was highly celebrated it was uh, shown everywhere on the media in every country similarly this is not the only mission which we had carried out in recent years we all in the last year we carried out the aditya l1 mission you know about l1 mission it is the lang range point l1 what it is what does it mean that it shows the uh, at this lang range uh, lang range point the gravitational fields uh, neglect each other the gravitational field of the sun and the moon they neglect each other so in this we are going to put our telescopes and in this lagrange point and you know study the uh, study the sun in the best way possible and after that uh, we also are planning about the gaganyaan mission in which we are going to send our uh, crew to the space station so this is very important uh, achievement in this we saw we also in isro was success in this mission the in the gaganyaan mission the isro was recently successful in in this regard successful about if they want about the mission they were very much successful they did the test about that and they were very much successful if they want about the mission anywhere in this space they isro was able to do that then finally there is another mission which is exposat it is the x-ray polar meter satellite you know it is going to study the radiations uh, from the sun uh, how uh, how radiations gets polarized in the space it is going to uh, study that it is the only second mission after the nasa's mission with respect to the uh, polar uh, polar meter satellite so it is it was one of the important achievement which uh, india has recently held and then finally about the Uh, re uh, reusable launch vehicle india has uh, launched it uh, with respect to this we have pushkal pushpak vehicle then in recent class we also discussed about the small satellite launch vehicle how it uh, it helps in launching the small satellites and we discussed it about uh, about small satellites launch vehicle in very much detail so 
what is the need of uh, naming these uh, uh, these missions which we had it shows the capability of indian space station it shows how much we are moving forward in this space race it shows india's capability to reach at the uh, different points in this space and it sh definitely shows the success of indian space mission so on this uh, 23rd august we celebrate the national space day and with respect to this let us have a look at the question which can be framed from this article you know while looking at these topics there can be hundreds of questions can be formed but you know last year aditya l1 mission was very much uh, it was very much hot news and uh, money uh, many people uh, expected question from with respect to the Aditya L1 mission in the prelims, but uh, such question was not asked. Now people are people are expecting that uh, questions related to Aditya L1 mission can come in the near exams. Now let us have a look at the question which can be framed from. Here the question says which of the following statements regarding the Aditya L1 mission are correct. First statement, Aditya L1 is India's first dedicated mission to study the sun, 100% correct. Second, the mission aims to explore the sun's surface and its outermost layer, the corona, 100% correct. Third, Aditya L1 will be placed in geostationary orbit around the Earth. It is incorrect because Aditya L1, it will be placed in a Lagrangian point orbit, especially L1, which is approximately 1.5 million kilometers from Earth. This orbit allows it continuously observe the sun without the interference of Earth's shadow and the gravitational pull, pulls between the Earth and the sun gets neglected. So uh, the, in this question, question number four, the first two statements are correct and unfor unfortunately the third statement is incorrect. So with this, let's move at the next, let's move towards the next and look at the topic which was in the news. You know, it is about the Russia-Ukraine war. It is very hot topic since last three years this is going on. You know, about this war, there was one interesting thing. You know, it was believed that Russia will take over Ukraine within a few months, but Ukraine showed its resistance. You can, Ukraine shows, showed its defensive character. It, it defended many of its territories, even though it lost many territories to the Russia, but it defended its territories, many territories, and uh, you know, the territories which uh, Ukraine lost to Russia are uh, namely Crimea, Donstok, and Luhansk. You know, these territories were lost by, India, by Ukraine. And it is said that Ukraine has lost 1 lakh thousand square kilometers to the Russia, but still uh, Russia was not able to, uh, you know, uh, able to capture the whole Ukraine. Russia was not able to destroy it as it was expected. Ukraine showed its defensive character. You can, Ukraine showed to the world that it can defend even though Russia is more supreme, even though Russia is more powerful, but still it defended its territories to the extent which was not believed. But Recently, there was an unexpected news. What was that? It is, you know, what was that? It is very much astonishing that Ukraine waged a war, waged a, an attack on the Russian territory, namely, uh, namely the Kursk Gambit. You know, in this Kursk, it is in the northeast of the uh, Russia, uh, northeast borders. Uh, it is a, a thousand square kilometers of land, and it was captured by the Ukraine. Now, it it shows something significant it has some it has huge significance in the world the world polity right now either this can go very well with the ukraine you know how ukraine has captured it, uh, some of the territory of russia you know this can frustrate the russian government this can frustrate the russian military and it showed the loopholes in the russian military so uh, russia can do further they can make further wrong decisions and finally Ukraine can get the upper hand in the war and also Ukraine can use this piece of land during the negotiations with the Russia you know it can take its land ba back and give it to the Russia this is very unlikely to happen but this can happen you know we cannot ignore this thing uh, and also you know uh, Ukraine has captured many soldiers of Russia so they can negotiate that that very well with Russia but this had some different effect also. You know, it can further frustrate the Russian. It can further, you know, uh, you know, it can make further angry. It can uh, raise the anger of the Russian army and the Russian leaders. And, you know, they may wage the stronger attacks on the Ukraine. And the, it may, uh, in fact, 
uh, you know it, it may in fact show the worst impact on the ukraine so yet we can we can't make some concrete decision from it but something is going to happen so with this article what can be the question which can be framed from uh, this article you know a, a question a, a map a map based question can be framed now let's look at the question uh, which can be framed on this article here the question says Kursk, uh, Kursuk is a place recently seen in news. It is located in which country? You know, such questions do come in the exams. Now, let's answer this very simple, very straightforward. Uh, it is uh, located in Russia. It was captured recently by Ukraine. Now, moving forward to the another topic which was in the news. It is about the Tripura Dam did not cause Bangladesh floods. You know, we had seen uh, in the news that uh, there are floods in the Bangladesh and uh, Tripura. We had seen it and it has raised many anti-Indian uh, elements, anti-Indian st stands, anti-Indian slogans in Bangladesh because they are blaming that these uh, uh, these floods are because of the uh, because of the deliberate attempts of uh, India. They had deliberately uh, deliberately opened the gates of the Dumbar Dam on Gomti River. They are blame, blaming that that India has done this deliberately so that uh, it will damage the Bangladeshi. Right now we also know that the condition in Bangladesh is very different. The government uh, which was very much friendly with India was toppled and it is likely to happen that the anti-Indian government will come that of Khalid Azia. So, these slogans are uh, raising, these anti-India stands are raising there. And we, we are seeing one similarity there. We are seeing that when our, you know, in Pakistan too, when uh, when such, when, when floods do come in the Pakistan, uh, uh, in the Pakistan, they also blame that these are done by the India, by Indians, especially the terrorist, terrorist outfits in Pakistan. They blame that uh, India is doing it deliberately. So, uh, so the, here is similarity. So it is believed that uh, the unrest which is in the Bangladesh, uh, uh, there could be the the uh, the hand behind, you know, the unrest in Bangladesh. It is said that Pakistan has something to do with that. They had led to that huge unrest in the Bangladesh. They had used their intelligence. They had, you know, provoked in, uh, the Bangladesh people against their leaders. And they are trying to provoke the Bangladesh people against India. And, you know, if this happens, it will have very unfortunate result on our relationship with Bangladesh. So with respect to this article, let us see what can be the question formed with respect to the Prelims. Here the question says the Dumbar Dam recently seen in news is located in which state UT? You know about the Dumbar Dam. Is it located in Jammu and Kashmir? No. Is it located in Ladakh? No. Is it located in Mizoram? No. It is definitely located in Tripura because we discussed it on the Gomati River which also originates from Tripura. Now let's move to the next topic. You know there was a picture on the Hindu newspaper where a child was sitting and feeding the birds. You know, this seems very beautiful. It has different values to the different people. Many people like to feed birds. Many people have some religious touch with them. But unfortunately, it has some health, huge health impacts. You know, these birds are uh, rising in our country. They are uh, reproducing at a very fast rate and, uh, you know, people feeding them. Uh, it uh, it gives a further rise to them. But unfortunately, you know, feeding birds is good, but you know, these birds have some very serious impact on our health too. You know why? Because of the feathers, because of the beat they produce, because of their feathers, all that, it can lead to the irreparable lung disease. You know, it can lead to the lung inflation. It can lead to the, to the hypersensitivity, pneumonitis, and it is very dangerous for the human body. It is very dangerous for the human health. You know, these birds can lead to these deadly diseases, and it is said that uh, you know, uh, people should avoid uh, the company of these birds because, because the feathers, uh, the dust they produce, the beet they produce, these uh, birds can impact our health in a very severe uh, manner. So with respect to this, it was very simple and small article. With respect to this, a question can be framed on this disease, which is HP, hypersensitivity pneumonitis. So let us see what the question can be framed on this article. 
here the question says daily quiz for is prelim you know here the question says which of the following statements regarding hypersensitivity pneumonitis are correct first statement uh, hp is an inflammatory response in the lungs caused by an immune reaction to inhaled organic antigens 100% correct you know it leads to the inflammation of lungs so statement 1 is incorrect say statement 2 it is primarily classified as an autoimmune disease with a clear genetic uh, predisposition this is incorrect because it is not autoimmune disease you know genetic uh, uh, makeup can play a role but it is not autoimmune second statement 2 is incorrect because you know the reason is given here because hp is not classified as an autoimmune disease it is an immune mediated inflammatory response rather than a primary autoimmune condition and while genetic factors may play a role it is more accurately associated with specific environmental exposure so this disease is mainly because of the environmental exposure and the third uh, statement in the, so the statement second is incorrect now looking at the third statement the common environmental uh, uh, triggers for a uh, hypersensitivity pneumonitis include bird droppings moldy hay and certain chemicals 100% correct so for this question the correct statements are statement 1 and statement 3 now with this we can complete today's discussion with respect to the current affairs with respect to the questions which can be formed from the current affairs now with this uh, let's move to the static portion which we have to discuss today in the static portion today we have to discuss about the act of 1786 before we discuss this let's have a little discussion why we are discussing these acts what is the need if we are discussing the polity why don't we start with the article 1 itself what is the need of discussing all this stuff the the very simple answer to this question is because it is very important for your first second reason you have to under to understand the polity you have to understand the history of the polity and the history of the polity with respect to india can be only understood by understanding the history of modern history and by especially understanding the british uh, uh, colonial rule in india how you know how they shifted uh, their rule how it was first under east india company how they started to control that how centralization happened in india and how uh, it further went to the to went for the decentralization how it led to the legislative assembly and how the first legislative assembly was responsible to the executive and how it shifted Uh, from legislative being responsible to the executive to executive being responsibility responsible to the legislative so to understand all this stuff we have to understand these small articles which are uh, in the book itself these small uh, things uh, which happened in the modern history during the british colonial rule so today we have to discuss about the act of 1786 before discussing this let's see what we had discussed so far the first thing which we discussed was with respect to the polity itself was the regulation act of 1773 you know in this act we saw that you know it was the first step taken by the british government to control and regulate the affairs of the east india company in india it recognized for the first time that the political and administrative functions of the company and that how it laid the foundation of central administration in india we saw the importance of regulating act of 1773 and what was the key feature of the regulating act of 1773 it uh, it designated the governor of bengal as the governor general of bengal and created an executive council of four members to assist him the first such governor general was uh, lord warren hastings so after that we saw that it established the supreme court in west bengal in kolkata after that we saw the, there were some loopholes with respect to the judiciary with respect to this regulation act of 1773 so the amending act of 1781 was brought in into we with respect to the amending act of 1781 we basically discussed about the uh, about the amendments related to the supreme court we saw that how it exempted the governor general and the council from the jurisdiction of the supreme court for the acts they had carried out uh, by them in their official capacity and we also saw that how uh, 
uh, how it excluded the revenue matters and the matters arising in the collection of revenue from the jurisdiction of the supreme court and we also saw the different uh, you know laws which were brought in it we saw the different different you know improvements which were brought in for example hindus were to be tried according to the hindu law and muslims were to be tried according to the muslim law so we discussed it in the amending act of 1781 after that we saw about the pits india act of 1784 it is key you know it was brought up uh, by the by then by british uh, by then prime minister in the british parliament namely william pitt we saw what were the key features of the pits india act of 1784 first it distinguished between the commercial and political functions of the company second it allowed the courts of directors to maintain uh, to manage the commercial affairs but created a new body called the board of control to manage the political affairs so this pits india act created the new body called the board of control to manage the political affairs and by this it laid the foundation it established a system of double government in india and there were other features of this pits india act so today we have to discuss about the act of 1784 about the act of 1784 we, before we should know that it was lord cornwallis he was appointed as the governor general of bengal when he came he laid few conditions before the british government that those conditions should be fulfilled with so that he can you know rule in the country without any hesitation what were his demands his first demand was he should be given power to override the decision of his council in special cases you know those decisions were taken uh, you know before this act the decisions were taken uh, were not taken uh, discreetly there were you know and there were there would happen the proper discussion with respect to the any you know uh, with respect to the any act with respect to the any act of the governor general proper proper discussion would happen with the executive council with his executive council and there would be voting and with respect to that those decisions would have been taken but he he specially demanded that he should be given power to override the decisions of his council in special cases and it was provided to him in this act of 1786 and also he demanded that he should also be the commander in chief he, he demanded that he should be commander in chief and this was also provided in this act of 1786 so these were the key features of this act of 1786 you know uh, with this is how why you know this is uh, these are the key features of act of 1786 that's what makes it important for you in uh, let's revise this uh, act once more you, you know first it uh, you know in the act of 1786 you know he uh, cornwalls lord cornwalls he puts his demands that he should be given power to override the decision of his council in special cases and it was provided to him and second he should also be the commander in chief so it was also given to him so he further strengthened his position he further strengthened the position of the governor general of bengal so this is how it is important for us you know a question from the modern history can be asked directly from this topic and you know a means based question from the with respect to the polity can be asked in with respect to this topic now let's move forward to the question which can be framed article here the question says which of the following statements accurately describe the act of 1786 the first statement it granted the governor general the power to override the decisions of the council of the east india company 100% correct second the act of 1786 introduced a system of dual government in bengal this is totally incorrect because it was already introduced by the pits india act of 1784 in which you know commercial and political functions were separately divided between Uh, between the court of directors and board of the control so in the question in this question only the statement 1 is correct statement 2 is incorrect with this we complete uh, today's discussion with respect to the static topic now let's move towards the uh, previous year questions which we take every day which we discuss and let's try to gain some knowledge from them and let's find out the ways and methods by which we can solve those questions here the question first question with respect to the previous year question is which one of the following statements is is not correct we here we have to find out the most incorrect statement here we have to find out the more incorrect statements with respect to these 
with respect to these questions so the first statement ali mardan khan introduced the system of revenue farming in, in bengal this is unfortunately incorrect because it was uh, farooq sir who introduced the system of revenue farming in bengal second statement maharaja ranjit singh set up modern foundries to manufacture cannons at lahore 100% correct third statement sawai jay singh of ember had euclid's elements of geometry translated into sanskrit 100% correct fourth statement sultan tipu of mysore gave money for the construction of the idol of goddess sharda in the shringari temple you know when if you are not well read about uh, the modern history most of the students will make uh, this incorrect because it is the perception of sultan tipu that he was more towards the muslim uh, you know he was more muslim he was that extremist but this is totally in uh, this is totally correct because he gave money for the construction of the idol of goddess shada in the shringari temple so in the question in this question the only incorrect statement is statement 1 so as we have to find out the incorrect statement so for this question the correct option would be option 1 now moving forward to the second question here it says which of the following provisions was not made in the charter act of 1833 here we have to find, find out which of the provision was not in the charter act of 1833 first the trading activities of east india company were to be abolished 100% correct second the designation of the supreme authority was to be changed as the governor general of india in council 100% correct it was under this charter act of 1833 third all law making powers to be conferred on governor general in council 100% correct d an indian was to be appointed as law member in governor general's council this is incorrect so for this question the incorrect statement would be statement d so as we have to find out the, the incorrect statement here so option d would be the correct option now moving forward to the last question of today's discussion it talks about with the reference to the colonial rule in india what was sought by the elbert bill in 1833 so about elbert bill let's look at the Uh, statements first uh, elbert bill uh, uh, was to, uh, it it brought uh, it's uh, uh, its aim was you know uh, its aim was to bring indians and europeans at par so far as the criminal jurisdiction of courts was concerned this is 100% correct statement 2 to, to impose severe restrictions on the freedom of native press as it was perceived to be hostile to the colonial rule incorrect statement 3 to encourage the native indians to appear for civil service examination by conducting them in india this is also incorrect so for this question the, for this question with respect to the elbert bill the correct option is option a which is to bring indians and europeans at par as far as the criminal jurisdiction of courts was concerned so for this question the correct option is option a with this we complete today's discussion i hope you would like the video i hope you would share it with your friends and i hope you would definitely subscribe the channel thank you for staying with me thank you very much